Uh, welcome to beautiful Ocala, Florida, home of the 15-acre campus of American Panel Corporation. And again, hello, I'm Kevin Graham, Vice President of Sales of an American Panel, and I've met many of you either in your place of business or at CIFA Pro Training or FPP Training, and those of you who have uh, sat through some of my sessions uh, know that I, I kind of try and mix things up a little bit. Uh, even though you may not have heard my presentations more than once, I always want to come with something fresh, something new, and something unique. So given the opportunity to do this webinar, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, bring you to the factory and give you a factory tour. Uh, before we get started actually in the nuts and bolts of how we manufacture walk-in coolers and freezers, refrigeration systems, blast chillers and shock freezers, I thought I'd show you our training center. This training center, like the CIFA Pro program, is committed to offering training to individuals who come here to our factory in the preparation and cooling, chilling, shock freezing, and storage of food products. The classroom setting lends itself very, very well to rep training, dealer training, and the occasional opportunity to bring uh, designing food service consultants into this facility. We're very, very proud of it, and we don't miss the opportunity to use it as a little bit of a showcase for some of our products. Some of our products like this AP20. This is a roll-in, fully self-contained blast chiller shock freezer. That is to say that it can take food from 160 down to 38 in the chilling mode, or if desired, from 160 down to zero, frozen solid all the way through to store for long periods of time. You can see the stainless steel interior has our single-sided evaporator, for increased airflow and uh, UL and NSF performance. As we get to the back of the room, as I go by a model 12, 7, and 7 counter, you'll see our AP3. This is our entry level blast chiller shock freezer, capable of doing all the functions that the AP20 and all of our other blast chiller shock freezers are capable of, but in an entry level three pan, 30 pound size. This little unit is a plug and play unit. It's 115 volt, operates at 10 amps, works off of any convenience receptacle in the kitchen. Let me walk back here toward our walk-in cooler freezer, which we have toward the back of the training center, and give you a peek into the cooler freezer sections. This is the minus 10 freezer you can see that this unit has a diamond aluminum tread plate floor. This floor has an interior ramp, and the ramps, for all of those champions who've learned about American Panel in the past, this ramp is really unique to us. It's fully welded, integral, foamed in place, and a part of the floor panel. It's not gonna come loose or wobble or have any motion in it. Also, when you're talking about integral and foamed in place, there's this nice clean kick plate. This diamond aluminum kick plate is actually part of the interior of this door tub. You'll see there's no mounting screws. It's really, really neat and clean. We've added a stainless steel push plate so that when someone on the inside comes out in a somewhat aggressive manner, they're not going to have any chance to dent the interior of that door tub. The door itself, well, Again, CIFA champions for American Panel, you know that we make our door jam and frame out of a product that's called a fiberglass reinforced polymer pultrusion. That's really a mouthful. Fiberglass reinforced polymer pultrusion. It's very, very strong. And I'm gonna show you specifically this material when we get out into the plant. There's the front of that door as we close it, and you'll see our standard handle. Although this has a polished chrome finish to it to stand off on the stainless steel, it has a built-in deadbolt that adds added security for any type of application. And look please here, we have vertical beading. This is on five and three quarter inch centered so it integrates with the regular panel seams 
And you'll see that across the front of this walk-in, we have a nice clapboard, visually appealing type finish. It's really, really handsome on white walk-ins and stainless steel and could be put on other metals upon your choice. You also need to take special attention at this heavy industrial stainless steel bumper rail. This is used by specifying consultants a lot in correctional applications because there's no visible mounting brackets. It's very, very tough. And when those carts go careening down a hallway or a service way, it's nice to have protection to keep them from colliding with your walk-in. Sliding on over to the cooler section, you'll see that unlike the freezer section, the cooler section is floorless. Floors are not required in coolers when they're on grade, so this is a nice opportunity to save a little bit of cash in the purchase price of your walk-in cold room and to facilitate the easy in and out of rolling stock. As you look in, you'll see a hidden third compartment, and we'll talk about that third compartment in just a second when we walk around the side of this walk-in, but I really want to point out the system monitor. The one that's on this cooler section is the upgraded system 200 monitor. Going back over to the freezer, you'll see our standard system 100 monitor. This unique devil is truly unique. It was developed by and is made exclusively for and by American Panel for inclusion on all of our walk-in cold rooms. This System 100 monitor is an audio-visual temperature alarm. When it's in tolerance, it shows the temperature. When it's too warm or too cold, it beeps and flashes, but it does something really, really unique as well. It has the capability of going to the building alarm system either at 115 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt for an alarm system monitored by ADT or Brinks or whoever, so that in the middle of the night, should something fail, the alarm company can dispatch a service person to take care of the issue. On top of being an audio-visual temperature alarm, it has the capability to comply with federal energy mandates and it can turn the lights off automatically. It also, fully programmable, controls the heater wire making sure that the heater wire lasts as long as possible, eliminating uh, pesky repairs to go out and replace the heater wire. As you go over to the System 200 monitor, this monitor does everything that the System 100 does, but it's a little bit more intelligent. It has a brain. It knows what year, what month, what day, hour, and minute it is. And as it monitors the temperature, it has the capability of reporting to the PC or through an SD card. It has the ability to document the temperature. This is really, really important if you have a client, if you have an institution, a prison, a hospital, a school district that wants to be involved in a HACCP program. HACCP, of course, is Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point where you document the temperature that the food is being stored so that should there be an issue later, you can defend yourself. The reason that it's here at this chiller, cooler section, is because that third compartment that I talked about. Let's come around the side and you'll see in this area there is an entrance to a integral blast chiller. This blast chiller, again, has the capability of taking that food from 160 down to 38 in 90 minutes, and with the controller that's up there at the right of the door, has the capability of going directly to that same PC that the System 200 monitor reported to and document that the food came in at a certain date, certain time, certain temperature, was brought down swiftly well inside HACCP and USDA uh, guidelines and chilled the food product appropriately. We're very, very proud of all of our blast chillers, of all of our shock freezers, our refrigeration systems, and of course, we've been making walk-ins for over 52 years. I'm going to take this opportunity now to go out into the plant, follow me, and come out, and I will walk you through the process of manufacturing. Here we are at the beginning of the process. I'm standing at the north 
west corner of our manufacturing facility and this is our original main building although it has been expanded this is 100,000 square feet of foaming space used to make the insulated panels that will become your walk-in cold room hopefully as we go along the way you'll see some of the things that we do uniquely I'm often told you know a box is a box is a box. A walk-in is a walk-in is a walk-in. It's just foam and a door. I think that as you look closely at the way we do things here at American Panel, you'll see that there really, really is a difference. The first thing you see, that's our little CD changer, if you will. At the beginning of the shift, the supervisor of the metal department looks at the cut sheet for what they have to uh, assemble for the working day and they get all the principal metals on that rotary uh, device that has upon it literally tons and tons of stainless steel, aluminum, acrylum, galvanized, or painted material to go on the walk-in. As you look off to the right, you'll see that the metal is fed into what is called a continuous shear. This continuous shear is a very, very unique piece of equipment. We obsess in making sure that metal is exactly the right length, exactly the right width, and doesn't lend itself to being stretched or tugged. The metal, as you see, which is feeding off the coil, goes through an electronic measurer that measures the length of the metal to three decimal places. Now, during the shearing process, there is the possibility that the metal may have to stop and start. To keep the metal, from being stressed because of these stops and starts, you'll see that we have a pit right off to my left here. This six foot deep, 16 foot long pit allows the metal to uncoil and not stop. Therefore, it doesn't tug and you don't get any stretching. When you're measuring to three decimal points, that's vitally, vitally important. I've often told people that walk-ins are kind of like Legos. You can start off with your basic white Legos and put them all together and you come up with a box. Not overly imaginative. But I've also told that some people that we can make any size, any shape, any configuration, angles, indoors, outdoors, column notches, height transitions. We are a versatile walk-in manufacturer. So, not all of that metal can be sheared on that continuous shear. We need operators that cut to a specific length, a specific width, to accommodate special Legos. Because you may not want to build just a plain box. You may want to build something that is more like a pirate ship or a space shuttle. And because these technicians and this man standing next to me, Billy, has been with us for 28 years, these technicians have the capability of cutting exactly what is needed. Now there's times that the computer can do even better than 28 years of experience. This true punch behind me is a million dollar piece of equipment. Look closely, you'll see that behind it is another one just like it. It may be really expensive to have duplication of million dollar equipment but you have the satisfaction of knowing that should calamity strike one of these pieces of equipment, we're not down. All of our key equipment is duplicated. We want to make sure that in that rush of July and August to get schools open, that just because a piece of equipment which has the potential to fail fails, that we continue to keep running. Here's a close-up of this device. And you get a lot for a million dollars. I know most of you have seen punch presses before and you recognize that this is kind of a punch press, but it's not just a single punch or a turret punch that has two, three, four dies on it. The rail that is a, that's at the far end, here's a closer look at it, has 23 different dies on it. This machine can go and snatch those dies off that rail and do all sorts of disciplines to the metal. It trues the metal up, again, making sure that 90 degree corners are 90.00 degrees, that we have exactly the right punches, the notches, the beading, like we saw on the training center stainless steel walk-in, louvers, 
whatever it is that needs to be done to this machine, it gets its instructions from our engineering department, reads them through the uh, computer which is running it, and gives you exactly the right size, exactly the right shape, exactly the right punches to make sure that the metal that goes into building your American panel walk-in is exactly right, again, to three decimal places. So we've obsessed about cutting it and making sure that the length and width are exactly right. We've obsessed about the angles of the corners and the notches and the punches and everything. What happens when you have to break the equipment, when you have to bend it? For some reason, when the manufacturers got all together, they decided that instead of saying bending, we call it breaking. Well, here's a state-of-the-art break. This, although not quite a million dollars, is the matching break to the punch that you just saw. This FlexiBend has a table, and it's a very, very unique table. You see it right below my right hand here. The ball bearings are just part of it. There are also built into this table little dog ears, and these dog ears have the capability of measuring the metal. You'll see the dog ears are in the down position here, and here they're in the up position. So when the technician lays the flat metal, as you see, on the table, slides it and rolls it around into position, the dog ears pop up because it knows exactly how the metal is supposed to be broken, bent. And after the break takes place, they readjust again, measuring to four decimal places, so that the metal that comes off of this break is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Well, we go from million dollar or near million dollar machines to one of the more, well, let's just say, not glamorous areas of our plant. It would have been easy for me to avoid this area because it's a little dirty and it's a little messy, but it's another American panel difference. We take the time, we go to the expense to treat every piece of metal interior, that is the portion of the skin of the metal that's going to come in contact with the foam, we treat it to make sure that that foam, that expanded polyurethane, that beautiful R32 foam adheres tenaciously to the skin. You see, I'm sure you have walked around during your careers and you've seen many a walk-in that has an air bubble or an inconsistency or what's called a delamination. We don't want that to ever happen to your American panel walk-in. That's why we go to the time to treat that metal. So, now we've got our perfectly measured, notched, grooved, punched, treated metal what happens to it next? Well, it goes into a fixture. And there are many, many fixtures that make up the manufacturing process here at American Panel. Behind me, on the right side of your screen to my left, is our newest addition. This is a multi-million dollar heated and cooled stack press. There are four openings that have a bed at the bottom of them, a platen, which is the portion of the fixture which squeezes down on the panel to make sure that it is exactly 4.00 inches thick, unless, of course, it's a five inch thick panel, but four or 5.00 inches thick, and that when we inject that expanded polyurethane, that it doesn't get out of tolerance. Immediately to my right, is one of the shuttles that will go into the fixture. It's pumped and the foam expands and is part of the integral panel. As we spin down to the other end of this stack press, you'll see that we have uh, where the panel actually comes out. I'm going to slide over to the side here and you're going to have a view of not only the shuttle, which is going to go into the stack press, but you'll see someone making a floor. This floor, which is available in the fixture, all the way behind me is in our floor press. And again, the shuttle goes into the floor press and the platen comes down and holds it to 4.00 inches. We have a floor press, and then immediately beside that, we have a ceiling press. So a stack press to accommodate 
repetitive sized wall panels or custom wall panels, the floor press, the ceiling press where the ceiling panels themselves are made, and then we even go over to our corner and T press. Our corner and T press, well, there's more obsessive behavior there. We calibrate this fixture regularly. We want to make sure that it's 90 degrees per corner. Whether it's a corner or a T panel, you don't want the panel to walk out or slope in when it gets away. So we do that regularly. You'll see that we also have an A-frame. This also makes walls. This is a high volume fixture. And unlike the floor and ceiling and stack press, the platen slides down the A of the A-frame and goes to the panels. This allows for a faster and more efficient manufacturing process. You'll see here at the far end, there's three panels that are about to come out of the fixture while the platen is squeezed down on three new panels. The A-frame fixture. Well, we've got corners, we've got T's, we've got walls, we've got floors, we've got ceilings. What about that door? Doors are vitally important to a walk-in. I've heard many people say that, you know, it's the only moving part of the walk-in. It needs to be durable. Well, this material, my friend, is extremely durable. It is what we call a fiberglass reinforced polymer pultrusion. Fiberglass, of course, like a fishing rod or a boat hull, is very, very strong. A polymer is a compound whose little carbon atoms want to hold on to each other. It doesn't want to switch around. It doesn't want to bend. This material won't warp. It won't bend. It won't dent. It won't rust. It won't support bacteria. It won't let heat transfer through it and by golly, it won't break. Bang! 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 I can knock this against this table multiple, multiple times. This material is tough and it's exclusive in this format to American Panel Corporation. Fiberglass reinforced polymer pultrusion. It's the toughest door in the industry. Won't rack, won't twist, won't warp, won't rust, and won't allow for transfer of heat. You know, if you're going to obsess like we do about having an airtight insulated room and you're putting a 34 inch by 77 inch hole in it called a door, you better make sure that you plug it efficiently. You'll see this table in front of me has all the componentry that the technician requires to do the pre-wire on a door frame. You'll see some finished door frames off here to the side, but what happens at this desk is that the individual has the wiring harnesses and the junction boxes. You'll see that the junction boxes also are out of a special plastic material that won't allow for any conduction of heat, as is the conduit. We end up with the finished door frame, which goes down to this fixture where we foam them in place so that the door frame, which is going to accept the door tub, is completely foamed in place with all the componentry, all the pre-wiring done here at the factory. Everything we make is fully UL listed and NSF listed. So we've got the entire assembly and what do we do next? Pack it and ship it off to you? Oh no, not until we make sure that it's absolutely perfect. We make sure that every walk-in cold room is the size, the shape, the configuration, and has the fit and finish that the measuring that metal to four decimal place uh, ensure. make sure that we build a pallet. Yes, we build them right here. You'll see they're made out of two befores and plywood, and not little one befores. We make them two inches longer and two inches wider than the largest panel. 
We put the panels on there with polystyrene to protect them in between. We put one befores on the corners, not some flimsy cardboard. We shrink them, we band them, we even put kick plates at the bottom so that there's no damage that can be incurred while it's going down the road. Now, if you don't have a forklift at your job site or your place of business, we can also put them in boxes, three panels at a time. In the event that there is a special need, if there's a, a shift in the job site arrangements and you're absolutely up against the wall on a delivery time, of course, we can crate the product to make sure that damage isn't even an option. Well, that brings us to the back door of our 100,000 square foot original building. Well, here on our campus, we have two buildings and hopefully sometime very, very soon, a third. As we look out the shipping door, we can see our refrigeration building across the street, directly across the street. Let's step inside. Here I am in the storage area of our refrigeration building. Now, I know that you've all seen inventory stacked up on pallet racks before, but there's a little bit of a story here, my friend. We are not a just-in-time manufacturer. We have to have complete inventory based upon horsepower, air-cooled, water-cooled, hermetic, semi-hermetic, scroll. What's the voltage? What's the phase? When you place your order and you're requesting refrigeration built up here in this refrigeration building, we have to have it so that we can meet our lead times. As we go back into the area where the technicians work, you see an area off behind me where we work on our blast chillers and shock freezers. These units are finished up and, and uh, made to ship here, uh, and we'll get into the area where we actually do the manufacturing of them in just a second. But as we walk over to the technician's desk, here we see a quick set line. This is a suction line for a remote quick connect refrigeration system. Those of you who are our recent uh, CIFA Pro training in Arizona saw us go through the individual components of a condensing unit, which is in the foreground, and the evaporator, which is in the back. This unit has been built up here in the factory and is getting to go through a pressure test where the technician makes sure that there's no leaks in the refrigeration system. Those refrigeration lines that we walked past just a moment ago will marry up to a system similar to this. Now, the lines that you saw before were for a remote quick connect. This is a top quick connect. It has the same liquid line, suction line arrangement, but the condensing unit is going directly on top of the walk-in itself. A very, very reliable type of refrigeration system. First of all, we do all of the work here in-house so that we know that there's no flux or any solder that gets into the systems to foul the valves, but it's just a very, very tidy, tidy, warrantable type of application. You know, as I sit here and uh, see behind me all of these blast chillers and shock freezers, it's with great pride that, that I, I uh, announce that we're continuing to develop more and more, not just in the walk-in area, but in the blast chiller shock freezer area. We've developed these units here uh, so that we can have both the self-contained units like this unit here, which is the evaporator assembly for the AP20 we saw across the street in the training center, but the self-contained units, the AP20s, and the more remote units that you see in the background here. They have the capability of running off of rack systems uh, supplied by others as well. You know, we developed this technology here at American Panel, and in doing so, we found the need to create a laboratory, an R&D laboratory, a testing center, if you will. Now, this may sound like a little bit of cloak and dagger, but perhaps what you see at the CIFA Pro sessions down in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, coming up this October, there might be something that comes out of this R&D lab. You see beside me is a cold room assembly because some of the items that we need to test have to be tested 
at extremely cold temperature. And what better way to emulate that cold temperature than in an American panel walk-in? We have an AP-12 self-contained unit there. We have all the pieces and parts and all of the gadgetry that, that engineers and mad scientists need to develop uh, the truly unique and cutting edge technology in the refrigeration world. There's many changes that are coming about in refrigeration, including new refrigerants and expanding agents. And we have been intimately involved with the Department of Energy and the EPA in working on the appropriate refrigerants for 2017 and beyond. You'll see we have an environmental chamber behind here. We have other components. We have other gadgetry which goes into uh, the repertoire of what our engineers are using to come up with solutions to our changing world. You know, there may be a little bit of cloak and dagger in our environmental room here might have some of the secrets that you're going to see at upcoming shows or see for pros. So I'm going to give you just a little look as to what it is we might be working on. That's enough. You know, American Panel loves CIFA. You have all been very, very good to us, and I appreciate the fact that you've come today to watch this webinar and virtually come to Ocala to visit us. You know, I wish lots of things. I hope that perhaps you learned something from this webinar. I hope that uh, you've had an experience with American Panel that has been truly rewarding, and I hope that you do know that American Panel loves CIFA. And it's our prayer that God may continue to bless you richly and that when you're ever in Ocala, you come visit us. Ocala, the coolest place on earth. Thank you for your time, and I'll take any questions you may have. Kevin, thank you very much. For